Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melder Production. Today I'm going to be going over Immulti Analyzer. Somebody asked me about this recently and I thought I'd do a video on it because this is a really, really useful plugin. I use this on almost every single mix. It's not one of the flashy ones, but this is something just utilitarian that you can use on any project. Uh, I even use it sometimes on single tracks. It's a very good analyzer, but it has cool features that make it especially useful for mixing. So first I'll go over how I use it. Basically I start a track and I set the levels, the initial levels to where it sounds good. This is after I finished recording and everything. From there, I sometimes put a compressor on some tracks if I think it really needs it. Sometimes I save that till later, but that's not really important. The important thing is before I do any EQing, I put M multi analyzer on every single track. I know it seems like it's a little big pain, but actually in lots of DAWs, especially in Reaper, you can just drag and drop over to the next track. And you think, ah, oh, but I'm after you know, go hear the name and write in every single name or go to the color and write in every single color. But actually that's not true. The easiest way to do it is click presets here and just choose a preset. They have, they should have one that matches what you want. If not, then you do have to, you know, write it in here and choose the color. But even in that case, you can just save it as a preset and use that later if you're using the same kind of music in the future. So if I always do orchestral mixes, you know, they probably don't have a fr flute here in the presets, but I can make a flute preset myself and use that. So there you go. Another way to do that is you can use follow host name and color and it'll choose whatever color my track is and the name there and put that in here for me automatically, which saves me a lot of time. And then you can see everything here. So I'd go through and just copy uh, one to every single track. Just choose a preset for each of them here. And I have everything the way I want it, except for this, which I named Cleed Guitar instead of Clean, but that's okay. <laughs> Anyways, once I have all that set up, I'll look through a few different things. Uh, the first one and the most important is probably the collisions here. What this is going to tell me is if any of the instruments are kind of interfering with each other. What I did is I kind of reduced most of those, so it's not it's not so bad here, but it, when you normally have it, it actually can get it bad. I'll let you see it and look here at the bottom of this red line. So I saw around here 200, there's lots of collisions. This is bright red. This is where you're probably gonna have a problem area. So then I would go in and I would use my EQ and then I start cutting around there. Like maybe I think, oh, okay, what's clashing here? And I might see like the drum set and the bass maybe. I also see that keyboard. Now don't go crazy because just because you see a collision doesn't mean necessarily it's terrible or you need to like change your mix or it needs EQing. Sometimes it doesn't. This is just basically a tool to help you. If you hear something that's wrong, this will tell you where you might want to check. Another thing that's very important for this is the threshold. So this will determine at what level will it show you a collision. So negative 50 is sometimes a little bit high. I might want to move it up. I'll show you what happens when I move it up and down. So as I move this threshold to the left, it will actually show me more collisions because the threshold for a collision will be lower. So I think negative 50 is a little less. I usually do like negative 40, but you can go higher or lower if you want. Uh, as I said, what this is really used for is using your ears. That's the most important thing is use your ears. If you don't hear a problem, I wouldn't automatically start cutting. But if you're like, oh, it sounds a little bit muddy. Where, where should I start cutting? This is a good place to check. And that's my main use for this. Another thing you might want to do is click the normalize button. So this way, all of the tracks are higher so you can see them. Uh.
you can see them more clearly. The problem with this is because it raises the gain of these, the collisions seem like they're more severe when they're actually not. So just keep that in mind. And always you can pause it if you like things are going too fast. And you're like, what what frequency was that? It just stops it so you can see things more clearly. Another thing, if that's happening too fast, turn the averaging up. And that slows things down. The averaging is just going to take a longer snapshot as opposed to like a really fast one because sometimes really fast you might hear there might be a collision, but it may not matter so much in the context of the song. Sometimes it might, but uh, sometimes it doesn't. So there you go. That's the collision mode, which I think is the main selling point of this. But we also have spectrum mode here where you can see things like a normal spectrum analyzer. And if you see here, like, ah, uh, these are too close to the bottom. I wish I could, like, move them up. You could use normalize, but I think a better way is to use the gain control to move these up so you can see some of the quieter tracks. You see, it's not actually raising the gain of my instruments. It's just raising the level of these so you can actually see them here instead of just hitting the normalize button. Also, if you want to uh, see lower, you can lower it, but also you can check the resolution here. This goes down to negative 60, but we could, of course, lower it like this. If you go really low, it's kind of crazy, the negative 150 uh, decibels. You probably don't need that, but it's there if you want it. Uh, another thing I really like about this is using the areas here. So let's say I don't want to see all the tracks. I just want to see the drum tracks. So I just go here to the left, turn these off, uh, and let's say uh, what area, maybe one area is too bassy or something. I can go into here at frequencies like this, and I can see what's the sub bass, low mids, mids, etc. Doing. And that gives you kind of a visual reference to what you're hearing. You can also use drums like this, and it'll show you about the different, uh, like the bass body, uh, bass drum uh, boom body, etc. And so this can sometimes be helpful when you're mixing. And if you don't like it, just turn it off. And the same thing with keyboard. Sometimes I wonder, like, what, what note is this? Is it hitting? So you have that there if you want. You also have a sonogram view. You have the loudness view too, which I don't use as much, but it could be interesting. I'm tired of hearing that same passage over and over again. So here you can see the relative loudness of each of the tracks. You have momentary, short-term, and integrated there. And the other one is the stereo mode. So you can see if you're, you know, you're going all over the place, you're leaning to one side or the other, like this. I can see in the middle here, this blue line, that's my bass. My bass is right in the center, it's mono. I don't have it going all over the place. And it didn't look like the tracks were like all the way shifted to one side. It looks like some of them like maybe the lead guitars or the piano. And you know, one hit, it's kind of on this side, another hit's kind of on that side. That's okay, you know, that's just stereo. I just don't want it to be constantly on the left or something, if it's not supposed to be, because then it sounds like my speakers are leaning to one side. And the last mode is the Oscilloscope, which I don't really use, but maybe it's fun to have. That's just kind of for fun. I don't really use that for anything, but you might want it. So there you have it. I think this is fairly easy to use. It shows you where your problems areas are, and you can easily correct them using your EQ or other means. Sometimes you use ducking, etc. And as I said, always use your ears, but sometimes you use your ears and your ears can tell you something's wrong, but you don't know how to fix it. This will tell you where the problem is, so then you can use your EQ and 
you know, zap it and get rid of it, have clearer sounding mixes. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave me any questions or comments down below and check out all the other plugins at melderproduction.com. Till next time, see you.